Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, and welcome to another Photo Creative Live. Um, if you've never seen a Photo Creative and you don't know what it is, it's a series of challenges and a group of the most friendly, wonderful people you could ever wish to meet of all sorts of abilities and skills from all over the world. And we do a challenge every month. Check out in the description below, you'll find a link to the website where there is all of the information that you need. So it is fantastic to see so many of our regulars back here again. Hello guys, it's lovely to see you. I hope you're well. Can you hear me? I always like to double check these things because you know me, I don't quite trust it all. <coughs> Hello Kenneth and Ava Marie. <laughs> Hello everybody. Can you hear me? Just, just give me a thing. Yes, loud and clear. Good. We're rocking and rolling. Fantastic. So did you all have a great Christmas? Did you all have a great New Year? And if you didn't do Christmas, then I hope you just had a brilliant time. Um, it's, it's really lovely to see you. Now, quick announcement. I noticed there was a little bit of confusion and people reminding others to put in the hashtag for the, you know, just to make sure it's an entry. I think M may have said, but we're going to drop the hashtag thing. It was something from the early days and it was a way to find the pictures, but realise it's actually redundant. So thank you very, very much to everybody in the group who's been helping everyone else out and saying, don't forget your hashtag, don't forget your hashtag. We're going to drop them. I've removed it from the website and it won't. We, you don't need it for the next challenge. Just put them in the relevant am, album, stick in a few words to say what it's all about, which is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> I also want to give a big shout out to Gert Custer, um, who's been a member of this group for a long time, and he's also an administrator. Uh, Gert helps out, helps Emma to administer the group, and he spends a lot of time trying to remove people who are spamming the group with, you know, advertising and promotions of their own. And yes, I know we could get rid of that if we made it a closed group, but I don't want to do that because, hey, this draws in a few new people, and yeah, it's a form of my advertising. What more can I say? Um, Gert, big shout out to you, and I think we all should give Gert a big thumbs up because he's completely awesome. I'm a bit quiet. I don't think I am. Sorry who said that. Rob, does anyone else think I'm a bit quiet? <clears throat> I've never been accused of being that before. <laughs> um, but yeah, big shout out to Gert. As far as I can tell, the audio seems to be good. Sound a bit low. Can you turn it up a bit, Gary? I don't know. Some say we're okay. Well, as long as you can hear me, rather than we waste time with me fiddling around with systems. As far as I can see, the audio levels on the screen say we are about right. I wonder if I can try and lift it just a bit. I might be able to. How's that? Is that any louder? Is that any better? <clears throat> Hopefully it is. So, <clears throat> the frame challenge. This challenge was frame. Frame in a frame. Frame in a frame is like a picture. Oh, no, I left my door open. <laughs> That's better. A frame in a frame is like something framed within a frame, within the frame of your camera. It is a composition technique, and it was brilliant seeing all the different things that you guys came up with. It was truly interesting and astonishing especially with it being you know a holiday season and all that everyone's doing their own thing running around doing stuff so without further ado let me get my screens sorted out and let's just get into it <clears throat> here we go Let's rock and roll. Of course, any feedback I do give tonight, I'm, I'm doing, I've got my coach's hat on. If you don't get a shout out, if I don't pick an image of yours, I'm sorry, there's just too many to do that. We've now got our um, feedback group, which is a paid for group. Um, it's currently full. Uh, we meet twice every month and, and we go through images and we really sort of deep dive a little bit more. It's a small, intimate, private group. If you want to go to the website, go and find the feedback group, stick your name down, and then if a space comes available, we, we can bring you in as well. But we're keeping the group small to make sure there's plenty of time 
for everybody. So let's have a look. What do we got? We've got some really interesting ideas. Who's this with the guinea pigs? I can't remember. Bjorn. <laughs> what a great fun picture, isn't it? So I'm, I'm pretty sure we've seen some of your guinea pigs in the past, which is kind of fun. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of patience to work with little creatures. Well, any sorts of creatures, even big ones. Don't work with kids and animals, as they say, because they are a bit unpredictable. I really like your idea. Um, and I love the way you've caught these little fellas with those grey expressions on their faces. You, you've timed that really, really well. I've just got to move something around on my screen because I'm not seeing something I should be able to see. Here we go. <clears throat> That's better. So yeah, we are we are seeing two happy little creatures bouncing around. Bjorn looks to me from the catch light in the eyes. I don't know if you used a flash or a desk light or a table light or something, but nonetheless, <laughs> I think it's a good fun picture. My only concern, I suppose, is it's just like you've cropped really tight to the edge of the frame. You've got that little gap at the top above the frame, which is nice, but I don't think you necessarily needed to crop it in quite so tight on the edges. Maybe the same sort of gap all around, I think, probably would have helped because you'd have had another layer of sort of frame within the frame. Um, you've got a bit of a yellowy colour cast from what I can see, which is possibly from your light source. But nonetheless, it's a really great picture. If you have another go, you know, just, just think about those little gaps all the way around because I think it will help. What have we got? Who's this? Nancy. Hello, Nancy. I kind of get where you're going with this. You've got, you know, that lovely, interesting building going on there, which is sort of nearly framed with the greenery and with the boom of the crane. Um, you've been around for a long time, but I don't think it's one of your best. Forgive me, I'm being harsh. Got the coach's hat on. We've also got quite a lot of extra crane, and I don't know, I haven't fiddled with this. Let's do our cropping things out game. So if I get my phone and just kind of, you see, if I take that extra crane on the left out, I think it helps a little bit. Now what happens if I come in from the right as well? No, I think we do need the counterweight on the end. Guys, do this for yourselves. Go and sit in the room, get your hands up and start doing this. Let other people think, what are they doing? And the regulars will be thinking, oh, he's doing that again. Um, you've got some nice light on the building. Um, I do like the light. It's, it's really bringing out the shapes and the textures. I can't help but wonder if there might have been a way to do it using the undergrowth rather than the crane. But, you know, good effort. Well done you for getting stuck in and keeping your eyes open because that is, of course, what these challenges are all about. Is is keeping your eyes open because one of the biggest problems many photographers seem to have is those times when we're not feeling that inspired you know we have to work at it we have to keep looking all the time when you watch a couple of um you know more experienced photographers walking around you'll often find they might be chatting but they're not looking at each other it's just a habit we just sort of walk around going like this all the time because we <laughs> can't help it it just becomes habit for me what else? Where can we go? Who's this? Ah, oh, it's our friend Jane Kilbride. That's a very Jane image. <laughs> that is a beautifully frame in a frame. That's a great example. Um, notice how the gaps all the way around that. I guess it's a train or possibly a bus window, something like that. Um, it's, it's all kind of pretty equal all the way around. And notice how Jane has framed the shot from really, really square on so that the window doesn't sort of, the perspective doesn't make it into an odd sort of cr compressed kind of a shape. <clears throat> I love the mistiness. Um, you're good at this, Jane. You know, you've been around a long time. You've been doing this. I do love the mistiness of it. I would love to, as always with me, see some interaction. If, if you could have been lucky enough to get the girl to stare at you or something, that would have been pretty cool. 
uh, but it's still a great picture and I quite like the balance of these colours, these warm tones, all these little streaky things in the window where a hand's been, but these warm tones and I don't know what it is there but it just sort of balances out with, with her dark hat and coat, this bit over here on the right. Um, hey Jane, you're welcome. I think it's a great picture, I really do. Um, I don't know what else to say. I don't know how could it be improved. Well, as I say, it's been great if she was looking at you, but hey, she wasn't, and maybe she never did, and the bus pulled away. That is what happens. <clears throat> Let's move up just a little bit further. This fun idea, Patrick Schofield. Hey, Patrick. <clears throat> I'm really intrigued. If you're here, Patrick, I would love to know what you used for your tube. Um, because I like the way it's picking up and reflecting those pinky colours from the flowers. Uh, I'm not sure what plants they are. I'm not very good at this. I'm sure someone will tell me in the chat. You know, I ride motorbikes, for goodness sake. I don't know about flowers. <laughs> I'm a rough trouser wearer. Um, it's a Pringles tube, is it? I'm just intrigued because it's almost reflective inside there. In this case, I'm going to say, hey, Patrick, Pringle Tube. I'm going to say in this case, Patrick, I'm wondering if you could have zoomed the lens a little longer or something or even cropped it because I don't think you need quite so much tube. If we kind of do a bit of a, a croppy thing like that with the hands, I think you can lose quite a bit of tube top and bottom. And it still really works quite well, particularly light, as I said, those colours reflecting back up the tube. Um, what have we got? Dahlias? Mm. Chrysanthemums? You see, nobody knows what they are. They're some strange and exotic plant. But yeah, good shot. I just think... What do you think, guys? Get your hands. Let's just take half of the top and half of the bottom off. Make it more of a square crop, perhaps. You could take a bit in from either side. What do you think? Do you think it's a bit better cropped? I think it, it just kind of really concentrates in on the flowers. What do you think? I'm going to have a bit less tube, says Diane. Yeah, I quite like the square thing, Fleetfoot. Kenneth likes it is, and that's completely fine. Absolutely fine. There's only one person any of us has to please with our photography, and that is ourselves. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Nice one, Patrick. I'm just making sure I don't pick one which I've already picked, because I'm good at that. Ken Harmon. I love the mistiness of this. And I also find it very intriguing because it's almost like the, so this is a wet bike, isn't it? And, and I've never seen a wet bike in a little river like that, which is quite fascinating. Um, but it's a great job of frame in a frame. You know, we've got the outside edge of the frame of the camera, the frame of the picture. And then you've got this, the guy on the wet bike sort of framed inside the arch of the bridge. And I love that sort of misty morning feel to it. Um, yeah, I don't think it needs any cropping. You probably take a little bit off the bottom, but I'm just being really, really picky, Ken. Um, yeah, I kind of like it. I think it's a nice picture. I like the way you've also allowed it to stay a bit light. It looks like you've done a little bit in post-production, a bit of dodging or something. Um, maybe a little bit more care up around the corner here, if that is what you did. And the clue to me is, is in here. It's like it's... It's sort of dodged in around here, but then it's dark in this little bit behind that little bit of bramble or whatever those leaves are. Um, so, yeah, always be a bit careful with some of those things. <clears throat> you see, actually, the more I look, I can see the, the, the line coming around here. Um, I don't even know if it needed quite so much. I know you're making the most of the mist and giving you that misty feeling. I still like it. Nice composition. Well, so let's, I'm hanging around down the bottom here quite a lot, aren't I? Carl, hello, Carl. What a lovely moment, great moment. Um, I love the energy. And technically, of course, the shot is all spot on. You know, your focus is where you want it and your exposure's bang on and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> 
And I can see where you're going. You're trying to you're sort of trying to frame her with this upright and and the piece above, and and the glass is sort of framed in the other side. Um, what more can I say? You've got lots of little frames going on here, haven't you? The more we look at it, the more frames we find. The bor the baubles framed in their little window boxes here as well. Um, I just yeah, I think I, I think it's an interesting shot. I'm not sure the frame in a frame element is coming through that strongly, but nonetheless, you've had your eyes open and you've been looking for these opportunities, and you found them. You know, you found one. And you've got a great little magic moment going on here. I love her expression. Let's ease up. My little scroll wheel's not working. I've got to keep going over here. What do we got here? Who's this? Jeff Frost. Hello, Jeff. I don't think we've met. <clears throat> Forgive me if we have. Interesting idea. An enemy's framed through a magnifying glass, which is framed by the tank with a bit of vignetting. Hmm. It's an interesting idea. I think the question is, Jeff, you know, would you look at this and go, well, that's a really intriguing image. Um, I, I do like the magnifying glass thing because it is, it is fairly intriguing. I think the thing which spoils it for me is, is I guess it's the hand of the magnifying glass. I know it says flipper. If you're here, Jeff, I would love to know, um, was that already on the aquarium tank? Is that part of the tank? Or is it something that you added to it? Um, just interested to know. But it is a nice idea. You've got some great colours. You've got everything lovely and sharp. Technically, it's all spot on. The exposure's all spot on. And I, I kind of like your idea because you have got some, some sort of different frames going on. And it is intriguing. So those would be the good points to sort of come back to with that one. We have another tube shot from Maggie Crawford. Hello, Maggie. <clears throat> oh, hang on. Let's just nip back one. I'm going to come back, Maggie. I'm coming back. Where is our aquarium shot gone? There it is. Because there was an interesting comment I just saw from Airtime. Would have been better cropped into the magnifying glass. It possibly would. Let's do our trying to crop things away game because, you know, possibly if it was really tight on the magnifying glass and you could have waited for a moment when a fish came through the magnifying glass, that could have worked really, really well. Good thing. Good, good point there, Airtime. Uh, yeah, nice thinking. That could have worked really well too. See, there are so many possibilities open to us with you know, all aspects of photography and, and creative stuff. Maggie Crawford, here we go, I'm back to you, the James Bond thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna say a similar thing. I love your thinking, and I'm really intrigued how you've got that little human figure bright down at the end, the light coming back up the tube. This looks like a cardboard tube, I'm not sure. Is it Christmas wrapping paper tube by any chance? But I'm just going to say much the same thing, Maggie. I think you could have got rid of a lot of tube. You could have easily probably taken it off at least 75% at the bottom and maybe similar at the top and a bit down the side. So your little circular piece of brightness was smack in the middle. But nonetheless, it's some great creative thinking. You know, and you put a load of work into it. You put a load of work into it. David Ratcliffe just said... Radcliffe, sorry, just said, Pringles tubes make great flash modifiers. Yeah, if they got that shiny inside, I totally get it. If you fire a flash through it, you've got a snoot. It's going to really direct the light. Good one. Hello, Maggie. Kitchen roll. James Bond stuck on the telly. Love the way you guys are so creative with this stuff. Right, what else have we got? Oh, this is our friend Ava. Hello, Ava Marie. We haven't seen you for a while, either that or I apologise, I've missed your pictures. What a great moment, your puppy Storm. You've got a lovely little moment here, Ava. Um, I love the way you've captured Storm's expression. You know, Storm's really alert. It's so easy when photographing dogs and animals. 
you know, they're, they're looking the other way or they're bored or they're not really joining in. Um, and you've caught a lovely little moment. I love the way Storm is really paying attention to you. You can also see how Ava has framed Storm using the edge of the dog cage and the leg of the table and the corner of the cabinet here and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I like the way you're thinking, which is really impressive considering how old you are. I can't remember. Are you seven, eight, somewhere around there? Um, you know, that's really creative thinking. You've also got some nice light because I'm guessing there is a window behind Storm. Look at this little rim light going on around Storm's ears here. Um, there's a little bit of a shadow coming forwards too, which is helping separate Storm out from the background. Seven. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that impressive? Good one, Ava. You just keep going because by the time you're my age, boy, are you going to be good. <laughs> Don't give up ever. Nice work, Ava. What more can I say? And it's lovely to see you here. <clears throat> Hello, Ahmed. Right, let's just move up a little bit further. There are so many here. Who's this? Ian Pritchard. Hello, Ian. <laughs> is this you, Ian? It is a really great little moment, isn't it? I don't think it is you, is it? We're on a bus. Have you got a bus driver or something? Or is it Santa traveling on the bus? I'd love to know if you're here, Ian. Um, <clears throat> I like the fact that you saw it, you know, you, you've noticed something and then used the mirror and the fact that you've not only noticed the mirror, you've got the theme going on, you know, with the snowflakey Christmas thing and the Santa. Um, it's a bit of a shame about whoever it is in the seat at the back. Maybe that is you. I'm not sure. That knee poking out and the white jumper and the can of something on the shelf kind of spoil it a little bit. But, you know, these are all things which I'm sure you've noticed for yourself, you know. Um, it's been good if you could possibly have got a bit higher with the camera so we had Santa more dominant because that would have maybe lost the can if you could have sort of lifted the angle of the camera so you're looking more down and probably just sort of come across the top of the seat, would have lost the white t-shirt and the can. Santa would have been more dominant. But nonetheless, well done. You spotted something interesting. And yeah, you got the exposure pretty good because, you know, that looks to me like it was not the best light to be working with at all. Let's move up a bit. What a lovely picture. Who's this? Mark Thompson. An elbow in the mist framed by trees on either side would be a great opening shot for a horror movie. Hmm, I guess so. I think it's a nice moody image anyway. Now, I get it. You've got the, the trees either side and the canal boat sitting in, that, in the mist there. And it's a lovely picture. Don't get me wrong. I'm thinking more about the frame in a frame theme using that composition technique of framing something inside a frame inside the frame of the camera yes they the boat is absolutely framed by the trees but i think in this case they feel more like leading lines we've got the little bright path in the water and the trees are almost helping it's almost like we've got three leading lines we've got the water running up and then the dark bit either side but it is still framing that boat um it's it is. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a nice picture. It's got lots of atmosphere. I didn't just mean the mist. It's an atmospheric shot. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got much I can add to that, my friend. What have we got here? Paul Martin. Hmm. I even had a music broadcast into the car via the radio. I'm missing something here. I'm not sure what it is. Christmas framework. Yeah, I'm missing something here, Paul. If anyone can see what I'm missing, because, hey, that's just me. I'm good at missing things. Please pop it into the chat, into the comments. Let's have a look. Because I'm a little bit confused. I'm not quite sure where to look here. Um, 
I'm not quite sure where to look and I'm not quite getting the frame in a frame thing. I get it, there's a there's a screen or something on the end of the house. We got the same image being projected. I just find it a little bit confusing, Paul. Um, so forgive me, my friend. I'm not quite sure how this one is working. Um, how could it be improved? I think it's just, it is so dark. Um, if there could have been just not quite so much black, which is really rather heavy. That means photographing it at a different time. Now I get it. Maybe you, you, you weren't there at a different time. You couldn't go there at a different time. Maybe it's you were traveling through somewhere. It was just a moment and you took the picture. Um, but yeah, always I find these night shots are best when there's still just a little bit of blue going on in the sky. Hey, airtime. Yep, it is too late to add a photo now, I'm afraid. Competition closed not competition, this challenge closed on the 31st, but the next one is opening, so there we go. Get in there. Um, there is a link in the description. Follow it through to the website. I'll be putting up the next challenge after this one. What else have we got going on in here? Let's just keep sneaking out. I can't believe it's 25 past already. This is interesting. Margie Wright-Jones. Hello, Margie Wright-Jones. I can see totally where you're going with the framing. And I like, you know, you've got just this little bit of moss at the top, you've got the trees coming in either side, and they're framing the scene of your, is it a heron? Again, I'm not great with those. Um, if it is a heron, um, unfortunately, wildlife's really, really good at disguising itself within its environment, is what animals are usually very, very good at indeed and your heron or this bird is doing precisely that. Um, in fact, I've just realized there are two of them. I didn't see this one first. And it is always a difficult thing when photographing wildlife because our brains go, oh look, there's the heron and we're concentrating, it's really standing out. But unless you've got something really directing you into the heron, like just a single shaft of light or something, or it's in a against the brightest part of the picture somewhere, it's, it's quite easy to lose them. So, you know, initially I didn't really notice the heron. What I noticed was the water and the shape. Um, it is that, that old thing. I think your exposure could have come down a little, Margie. It strikes me as being just a touch bright. I think it could have come down a bit. What was that? I saw, a, a, could it be cropped a bit, which would still give a frame within the frame? Well, let's try it. Good thinking. Um, I don't know, we could take a bit off the top. And I mean, maybe just include these little edges on either side. Just sort of take it so it's only the tiniest hint at the bottom. But I'm not sure, I think if we lost if you take it off either side, it's no longer framing quite so well. Good effort, Margie, good effort. Keep an eye on that exposure and try and look out for moments. So like, notice the bird here, the one which I missed at the bottom. Um, I think if the exposure was down a bit and that bird was stood in front of this white rock or crouching or something, then I think it would have drawn the attention into that area and then we, we'd have got the two birds together. This is where decisive moments come in as well. Airtime's saying no crop the right entirely. We're no longer framing then. It, it's not framing. That that branch on the right is. Um, and it's difficult, I know, I'm, I'm being harsh. It's like the brief was a frame within the frame. Um, and then trying to make everything else work on top of that finding the image, finding the framing, and finding all the other creative things going on. Nice one, Margie. Gary Cleesby. Hello, Gary. Oh, you're not here, are you? Was it you, Gary, who said, no, it was Glenn who said he couldn't make it tonight? Um, <laughs> another great little moment. I like all these triangles. You've got some triangular framing going on. You've got some nice, simple colors. We've got gray and green and gray and green. Um, it just missed the moment, hasn't it, Gary? And the focus has just missed off. The focus has just missed the squirrel and he's caught the grass just behind the squirrel. And the moment has just gone. 
because squirrel is just starting to disappear behind this bank on the right gary i mean look gary we know you're pretty good at it and i'm never going to let you forget you beat me in that photo competition um but i think we could take quite a lot off either end and just keep it a bit more sort of on the squirrel i think the main problem here my friend the squirrel's just gone past that optimum moment when it's equally framed in the v and also the focus is more on these tufts of grass at the back it's just gone beyond it it's so frustrating when that happens happens to us all though my friend let's just ease up a bit who's it? julia bevan hello that's iceland i can recognize that place you're in iceland this month why weren't you coming with me in a couple of weeks time no next week actually never mind i'll let you off hello julia it's kind of interesting so this is the churchyard gate isn't it i love these weird little red roof churches we find all over um um iceland margie i think i like your idea you've done a great frame and a frame thing and you've got some lovely gentle colors i love the way that you know the paintwork on the gate is kind of working with the sky and indeed the colors of the building we've got red and blue they're kind of dominant and red and blue they're best friends they always seem to work together hussein good to see you sorry to break off i've just seen our lovely friend hussein nurian been on a couple of workshops and surprised us all and sent me a lovely book of his photos too it's good to see you my friend hope our paths cross again in the future red and blue the colors they just kind of work together so well spotted my thing is i don't think you need so much sky at the top i'm just being harsh i know um you could just lose i would say hmm, probably 90 percent, 75 percent of the sky from the top try it guys get your hand or, or a piece of card or something and just take that bit of extra sky off the top so that the gaps between the uprights of the gate and the edge of the frame is the same as the gap across the top so you'd be sort of cutting it off across there somewhere where my curse is going i guess um i'm being harsh well spotted it's a great little moment um you know and it's nice to see those colors hope you had a good time in iceland nasty cold place <laughs> let's move up a little further oh i see we've got a little bit of time what's this this looks kind of interesting linda o'neill lovely example of framing going on here and i love the way those trees in the distance keep going off into the distance um that's a great little moment and i like the way it's kind of silhouetted how could it be better because i mean you know your exposure spot on everything's nice you've got lovely light coming towards the camera it's working really well hi linda good to see you here um i'm just thinking it's i think for me how could it be improved i just think it's a moment between i'm guessing it's mother and child um maybe i don't know I, I i'm a big fan of using burst mode in these moments um just so that you can try and capture the perfect moment somehow mum looks a little bit awkward and uncomfortable but i like the position of, of the little person been great if there was a moment when the two happened to look towards each other or maybe mum was set up a bit straighter and the arm was further down maybe that never happened uh, granddad and granddaughter sorry i'm mistaking something as as, as long hair i guess <clears throat> nonetheless it's a lovely picture but it's not a but it's just my coaching how could it be made better is possibly just decisive moments to say big fan of burst mode when doing things like this you can just click it off but yeah technically it's all spot on focus is lovely exposure is lovely well spotted little moment which absolutely fulfills the brief rob law again i like your framing you know you're working with this frame in a frame thing you're framing using the arch of the bridge 
Um, I think once again, who is it who just said you 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 can't win? There's either too much or too little. Or, yeah, I know. Because at the end of the day, remember, it's only my opinion. Um, I'm just giving my opinion, and anyone who enters competitions will know that everything changes with the opinion of the judge. Depends who the judge is as to what they say. I would take a little bit off the left. You could even take a shave off the right and the top as well. The biggest thing is what you are framing is kind of a long way away. I think it could be improved, you know, if the boat was was closer to the arch of the bridge. And you're thinking, well, I can't go and move someone else's boat. Indeed, you can't. Totally get it, Rob. But what you might have been able to do, I'm not sure how you did it, how you shot this, but if you had a longer focal length, you may, I don't know, I wasn't there, I don't know the physical surroundings, but you may have been able to zoom the lens longer and move yourself further back. Because by doing that, you would still have the frame of the arch, but it would draw the canal boats much, much closer to it and make them bigger. This is one of those things, focal length, it's not a great idea to sort of, you know, stand there, zoom around and, and then take the picture. You need to think, how will the focal length affect how the picture looks and feels? Then you choose the focal length for that reason, and then you move your body in order to get the magnification and the composition. It's all little row of dominoes. Um, if anyone's done my online masterclass in photography, there is a huge section on this and there's some quite a, quite a lot of exercises that you can do which are laid out within that course, um, <clears throat> which will really help you get your head around this so you can pre-visualize how a focal length will make an image look. It's one of the reasons I'm a big fan of zooms actually because primes might be great and they absolutely have their place. I just like using zooms because it gives the flexibility so that you can kind of see something and without having to dig around and have a dozen lenses with you, you can just quickly whoop and move and move back, zoom it, whatever, to create the look that you want to create. <clears throat> so if anyone's confused about this, please go and check out my Masterclass in Photography online course. Link in the description below. Go and find out. You can even try a free sample. And if you've done the course and you're still struggling with it, go and do the exercises. And keep doing the exercises until you no longer have to refer back to them. Because when you get to the point where you don't have to go back to it and go, what was it you did next? That means you've got it. That means it's gone in and you no longer have to think about it. Anyway, great effort, Rob. I like it. Let's just, now there's a frame in a frame, isn't it? Fiona Campbell. <clears throat> you got loads of frames here haven't you and I kind of like all this this woodwork and stuff and that red shirt red is a very dominant color it certainly draws us Fiona I think this would have benefited from having your exposure up just a bit because everything could be brighter I think if you could have either slowed the shutter speed but I'm guessing you didn't have a lot of light um, and that could have ended up with a lot of camera shake, but you could always just quickly flick that ISO up and it would just brighten the whole thing up a bit. So, so the guy in the red shirt is more dominant, if you like. He's a little bit lost at the moment, but I kind of like all your lines and crisscrosses and you have got him framed in a frame, in a frame, in a frame, really. Um, okay, there we go. You see, what do I know? ISO was already 12,800 difficult situation to shoot in. So good on you for being brave enough to get that ISO up there. Unfortunately, you just didn't have quite enough light to work with. Um, it's just one of those things, the light wasn't playing ball with you. But nonetheless, well spotted, nicely done. What have we got here? That's an interesting pit of Monica Braun. We've got lots of regulars here. We haven't seen so many new faces so far. I love your colours, Monica, and I like the way you frame that so carefully. You know, you've got all your uprights absolutely upright, and you've got your gaps all nice, and everything's lined up. 
I kind of like the power wires at the top. I know, I'm a weirdo. Um, but to me, it's just part of what this place is. The, the subtlety of the colours, the, the faded Pepsi signs, it, it kind of says a lot, really. Um, well, I haven't read it. Not a pretty picture. City has seen better days. Yeah, I totally get that. <clears throat> what does it need to make it really pop? Because you've got a lot of frames here, but they're not much framing anything. This is, I think, that kind of moment when you need someone in the shot. You need someone framed in one of those doorways, someone walking past. Um, if you capture someone just here, for example, um, as they walked up the pavement, I think that would have absolutely made this pop. Um, I'm just looking because that kind of yellow anchor for a power pole or something is slightly distracting. But I don't think, I, th I think it's worth keeping the third doorway there, you know? These are things you can do when shooting, everybody, by the way. You can be out, you can be shooting pictures. You know, try things. This is another thing I like about zoom lenses. You can think, do I want all three? You can take the shot and I'm going to try one with just two of the, the frames instead of the third. And you can make informed choices. You might zoom it and go, nah, not even bother to go click. Always try little different things. I think it's a great picture, Monica. And I just think if there was a person in that doorway walking past that doorway it would have been great if you could have hung around for a little while patience is one of the photographer's great friends how far up are we what's the time i'm going to move up a bit guys because i just realized we're only halfway up so forgive me if i'm skipping past some of your images i'll go a little slow so you get the chance to have a look at them um yvonne williams you've been playing in the computer haven't you yvonne <laughs> I reckon, I can't imagine another way you could get a sparkler hoop around a squirrel. I could be wrong. It happened once before. Um, just a little bit of Photoshop. There you go. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? Let's just ease up. Just keep easing up a bit more. That's a really nice frame, Pete Keats. <clears throat> um, it's a nice frame, Pete, and I think I can see what you're trying to achieve here. You know, um, leave, leaving through these doors after a wonderful Christmas dinner. Right, you're full of Christmas cheer, my friend. <laughs> and you've done it carefully. Look how perfectly you've lined up those doors and that frame. Um, unfortunately, it's the thing it's framing is, I guess, the Christmas tree. The thing that isn't quite working for me... Is, I'm only saying for me, please contradict me, anybody contradict me, um, is the light, is the tree. It's kind of like where the top of it is cut off and you've done this so carefully to line everything up. Everything's all beautifully lined up. You've really worked with that composition. But to me, the tree is just kind of, we're being led in through this frame to, a, forgive me, slightly dull looking tree. Um, I'm guessing it's one of those things you probably weren't able to just go back there, but this is where you start to get the magic of the photos would be to go back in the evening when that tree is lit up because it looks to me as though it's got lots of little lights on it. It's just they're not quite lit up yet. Good effort though, Pete. And well done. You know, you spotted something. It's not every day when you're leaving after a good lunch that you think, I'm going to take a picture on the way out. That is dedication here's a great bit of framing what's going on here Beryl Franklin hello Beryl that's a lovely bit of framing isn't it you know the whole thing just kind of works the theme of the arch that we're framed by works with the cathedral on the other side of the cloister um, what more can I say the only thing I would say Barrel. It looks, this is just what I'm getting. I could be very wrong. It's a lovely composition, but it just looks to me there's something lacking in the contrast of the cathedral. There's something suggesting to me it's something you've tried to rescue a bit in post-production. If you're here, please, please, please contradict me because it is such a lovely composition. 
Um, it really is. I just, I just get the feeling that this area has been fiddled with a bit. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with fiddling about in post-production. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. I think that the trick, though, is to try and do it so it doesn't look as though anything's been changed because to our eyes, things look completely different to the way the camera will capture them. Look at this beautiful light coming in around this lovely ornate stonework. It's just gorgeous that somehow the light out here doesn't match it. That's what I'm on about. I'm being harsh, I know. It's, it's, it's a bit of a push. Um, but yeah, beautifully composed image. You put a lot of effort into that. Hey, Beryl! Yeah, you had to brighten it as it was quite dark. Got it. Yeah, always so difficult to do those things. Um, Beryl, I, you may have heard me say it before, something I'm a big, big fan of in these situations, because it looks to me as though you could have probably lifted your exposure a bit, because all this area here has got beautiful detail in it. Um, or, as I think someone said, HDR, three frames bracketed as RAWs, merge them, and uh, then you can usually, it's usually easier, I find, to, to kind of get a more natural look. But what a beautiful composition. Well spotted, beautifully done. Love the light around the edge. Ease our way up a bit. Oh, there's loads of things here that I kind of want to talk about, but I'm sorry, I am going to knock it on the head pretty much on time this evening. Let's have a look. What have we got here? Paul Lynn. Hello, Paul. <laughs> Again, look, we've got such great frames. We've got so many frames going on in here, and I like the fact there's this continuity with the open shutters and all the rest of it. Paul, forgive me a little bit. Careful. It's, I know I'm being picky. I've got my coach's hat on. Um, it's just the way this, this catch just sort of is, you know, the window catch is just over the edge of the frame and the other one isn't. I'm being picky. Um, but I do like your framing. I really do. The only thing is, again, I'm, I'm kind of, the framing's lovely. The initial impression of the pitch is lovely. I just feel just a little let down by what it's framing. I feel we need something a little more interesting. I don't know, a dog standing there or a person or a small child or, I don't know, just something unexpected. Um, this is where, again, patience is the photographer's friend. All trying to talk a passerby into doing something. But, you know, you've really worked carefully with the composition. Um, mm, good job. Interesting. I've just seen something. Kenneth Caldwell has just said um, that for him, that last shot here is one of his favourites from this challenge. This is what I mean. There is no right and there is no wrong. I can try and coach you. But, you know, the only person we've got to please is ourselves. So, you know, don't ever be disheartened. Particularly those of you who are in camera clubs. I was talking about this in a talk I did for a club fairly recently um, with people. And we were also discussing it in my, you know, feedback group, the, the uh, Picture Perfect free feedback group. People who are in clubs, because sometimes camera club judges are ridiculously harsh. Um, and I don't know why it is, it just seems to be that way. Don't ever be discouraged when I or anyone else sort of goes, well, I think it would be better like this or like that. Because you can take it on board and think, mm, maybe they got a point, or mm, no, I don't agree. Completely fine. Doesn't mean anything. Let's roll on a bit. What a fun picture. Who's this? Susie Natman. <laughs> What a fun picture. What a fun picture. If you're here, Susie, I'd love to know. It looks to me like she absolutely knows you're there and is just interacting with you and having fun. Um, it is such a fun picture. I like the shadows of the balcony and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, how could it be better? How could we improve? I'm going to say if you could have just tilt with the camera up a little, Susie, there may be a good reason why you didn't. But I just think if the whole frame was around this lady, um, it would be good. She was posing all the time, just asking for people to look at her. How brilliant. Well spotted. Um, 
Yeah, that's all I would say is just if you could tilt the camera up a little bit, don't come in any tighter because you'd lose that shadow, which I really, really like of the balcony. But yeah, if you just caught the top of the window as well, I think we, because this bit below, you know, maybe just below the shadow is good, but you know, you could have spent a little bit of this real estate up there. It was just a thought. Was in a hurry crossing the road. Mm, good point. You don't really want to get run over, particularly not in Barcelona. Um, however, in my experience, cars usually shout and honk the horn at you. They don't actually run you over. But hey, I could be wrong. That was not to be taken as health and safety advice. That's a nice picture. Eric. Hello, Eric. Lots of interesting frames going off into the distance. You've sort of got... I kind of like this. There's some lovely textures and lines going away into the distance. And I like the way you've kind of framed your picture of the frames, you know, with these timbers here. The, the way you've positioned it, it's all kind of not symmetrical. Hey, Eric. Good to see you here, my friend. It's all kind of not symmetrical. And it works. I think it works. What more can I say? Lovely light. Look at the light. You know, why are these timbers all sort of looking as they do? Eric's got some really great light there. Um, forgive me, Eric. It looks to me like possibly the background's been a little bit, maybe had a bit of um, negative clarity put into it. It just looks a little strange. And I know I'm a realism junkie. It almost looks like you put a little bit of negative clarity into there just to soften that background a bit, which is fine, well and good. I just feel you would maybe just a touch heavy handed with it. But nonetheless, it's a great picture. And I love, look at the shadows running away. The light is gorgeous. The place is gorgeous. Beautifully done, sir. Where are we? Let's keep working our way towards the top to make sure we get everything in as we go that's nice who is this sarah shandle hey sarah i don't think we've met gorgeous light really 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 gorgeous beautiful light love the way it's coming across this desk it's such a uh I don't know, human sort of a scene, you know, you come to the end of the day, you finish work, and I know I'm a bit crazy, I, I make up stories. But um, Fleetfoot, are you Sarah? <laughs> if you are, just say yes. Um, it's interesting to know. But, you know, I like the way you have framed the sunset in the frame of the patio doors. Um, and the light coming in through here is it's really lovely it really is uh, right i've had enough for today i'm going to go and sit down and chill out a little bit here we go hey sarah you were heading out onto the balcony to take a regular sun oh it's a sunrise okay this caught my eye well there you go see i made up a story immediately we all make up stories in our heads i do it a lot you know I, i've got it's a sunset and it's the end of the day and you finish not that you got up early to go out and have a look at the sunrise but nonetheless it doesn't matter it works. Um, yeah, it works. Let's just ease up just a bit more. Who's this one? David Mill. Hello, David. Enchanted trailer and Colchester Zoo. <laughs> this guy was playing piano inside one of the enclosures. Okay, you've got a frame in a frame going on this for sure, David. Um, you've also got a terribly grumpy looking pianist, my friend. Um, I think this is one of those, another of those moments, you know, it's like, don't be too impatient. Don't be in a hurry. Um, just kind of wait and see if you can either get him really concentrated and lost in his playing or kind of, you know, interacting and looking joyous. He, he just kind of looks like, so miserable <laughs> and generally speaking musicians aren't they usually you know they get all passionate and love it um i don't know if there was a top to this frame if there was i would love to see it in there i think that would help hey david you were holding up the queue oh sodom it's christmas give yourself a present um i totally get it but it is a shame he's looking so grumpy because you know otherwise it's all is pretty good you know 
Um, a difficult shot to do too, because I can see you're having to shoot through here at an angle in order to get the pianist. Ideally, you'd have been more to the right so that oh, everything would be nice and straight. But if you did that, you're going to lose most of the pianist. I quite like the way you've got him positioned as well down the bottom there. Good effort, sir. Good effort. And I totally get it. You were holding him out. Oh, I see there was no top to the frame. That's a shame. Never mind. Good effort. Good effort. Let's just scroll a little further up to the top. That's interesting. Who's this? Emily Jones. <clears throat> Hello, Emily Jones. I'm going to ask a question just out of interest. Anyone else? Just, you know, just one, maybe two words. You know, any idea where, what drew me to this? How is, what is the frame part here? Just chuck something in the comments. It's always interesting just to see if anyone else sees what well, I see or, or you know, you see what someone else sees. What do you think? What is the bit which is kind of bringing it all to life? It's really interesting. Come on, guys, leap in there. Interesting. You see, isn't it it's so interesting, you know, when you look at these comments, how everyone, oh, look at that. That's interesting. I hadn't noticed. Well done, Sarah Moore. I hadn't really noticed to begin with. You're correct. It is a hair. Look at that. I knew an animal. I knew a creature. Hey, Jamie. Interesting. Yeah, to me, it's, it's the light. The way that Emily's used the light to frame the hair sculpture. And then the other things that are going on around it are just sort of supporting it. They're almost holding the edges of, of the picture in. You know, the, the vase of flowers and the edge of the picture frame. Because they're in deeper shade, even though they're sort of cut off to the edges, you know, and whatever this is, this is Blackpool here. Um, even though they're cut off, the fact the light is falling away, light is king, light is so, so, so important. Um, I think it's the light and the hair sculpture. And then the mirror is, is just telling us a little bit about the room. It's still framing our sculpture. And even the shadows at the top where the light is reflecting off the mirror and it's throwing these shadows from the decorations on the ceiling. I really, really like this, Emily. What more can I say? I think it just works. Um, and it's such a simple sort of a picture. You spotted it and, and you did it. So yeah, nicely done, nicely done. Interesting as well, how some people are drawn to the mirror and that reflection and, and some people are drawn to the hair. Always interesting. Oh, who's this? I can't resist it. Sorry, David Radcliffe. Hey, David. Just, you know, I love a bit of streety stuff that I can't help myself. I like your moment, and I like the way you framed. Sorry, your moment. I like your moment. I like the way this woman is engaged with something. And I like the way you, you framed her within the frame of the doorway and all that stuff. My coaching to you, Dave, I don't know if you had time, just a fraction of movement, just a little lean of the body to the left, possibly. Um, yeah, you don't want to get that handrail in between the two women. And it would, of course, I know I always say this, I love a bit of interaction with the subject. But yeah, well captured, nicely done, nicely done. To me, that's why that image works anyway. Is there anything else? Let's see if we can find one. That's good fun, isn't it? Karen Roberts. Yeah, you see, that's a different take on it, isn't it? Sorting out the bill, sorting out the invoices, paying for the water. But yeah, nicely, you know, it's just a different. You've given a, a little feeling and a little story. You've said something about what's going on here and used, you, you've used a frame and a frame. Nicely done. Have another little look. What else have we got? Ah, what a happy little face here. Stephen. It's a nice picture, don't get me wrong. All I'm saying, my friend, is that it's framing kind of a shape, I suppose. Maybe it's me, maybe I'm missing a bit. It is framing a shape, 
to me it's it's this bit which i find really distracting the fact the top of that triangular shape is cut off i think you could have spent maybe a bit of that real estate at the bottom at the top just kind of carefully got it in there but otherwise yeah nice shot nice shot okay where are we it is time so let's let me get myself sorted out and let's go through the ones which i kind of have to confess i'm rather fell in love with them was drawn to just before we do guys i want to give you a huge shout out to anybody who has been making donations to, to help support the group. I, we all owe you a big round of applause and a hug. Um, you know, we changed our system over recently and as you know, that canceled everything and you all had to go and do it again. So I super, super congratulate and thank you for doing that. If anyone wants to make small donations, please visit the page. There's a link in the description below where you can find out you can make a little regular donation if you wish or a one-off or however you want to do it. Um, it all the information is there on that page and just before we dive into these as well if you haven't already hit that like button please do so now don't forget smash that like button it really really helps it really does you have no idea how much it helps okay Let's rock and roll. So, the first one, which I'm picking up on, is, hey, Soothing Sounds, thank you. You can also, of course, support the group by buying a sticker as Soothing Sounds just has done. Um, appreciate that, really appreciate it, thank you. Okay, this is our, <laughs> our friend, China Morgan. And I know I can never remember your real name. It's just too confusing for a poor old fella like me. But I just thought it was a really beautifully done example of a frame within a frame. Um, you know, that lovely, calm... Julia, sorry, Ju oh, of course, your Jules Vid's over there and your Julia in real life and your Shina Morgan in here. <gasps> so many people rolled in one. I just think it's beautiful. <clears throat> that lovely, lovely circle, you know, reminiscent of the tubes that we were looking down, the James Bond thing, the gentle colours. I mean, you know, Julia, you are quite an, you are an accomplished photographer. I know that you've been on workshops, we've met, you know, and all that stuff. Um, and you've done it beautifully. The way you have the circle right in the middle, and you've got the right moment. The water is beautifully calm and still. You've got those soft pastely colours. You haven't attempted to try and pump them up too much in post-production. The light is just kissing onto the greenery on either side of the picture. And your central frame is, shame, it sh is framing that rock, I guess it is, or sculpture, I'm not sure, that's out on the lake. Um, yeah. Good words, Alan Baxter. A classic image, indeed. Um, love it. Had to kind of put that one in there. I really did. Now we're going somewhere completely different and a completely different way of doing things, but it just made me laugh. And I thought it was great fun. Hey, Jane Barnes, I do hope you're here because you're usually the first one and you were beaten by Glyn Haskins this time. Um, I just think it's great thinking. It's just a different way of going about something, you know, putting your camera in the bottom of the bin, probably with the self timer on, um, and then just kind of doing something. Uh, it's quite a tricky exposure to get right, possibly. I don't know. I'm not sure because, you know, there's a lot of light in the top. Um, oh, hey, Irene. Thank you for that. Jane said she was away this morning. Got it. Um, you know, I so respect you guys down there on the other side of the planet getting up really, really early to come week after month after month after month after month. So, yeah, thanks. I just think it's a great fun picture. It's completely the other end of the scale to you know the one we've just looked at at Julia's picture but it's fun and it kind of fulfills the brief and it just tells a little bit of a story I think this next one as well tells a bit of a story again from another long time again from Sam Sam Chirouz 
it's just a happy picture isn't it and the cool thing here i think sam is you've just you've just caught the perfect moment i don't know if you posed these two i don't know if you asked them to do it i'm guessing you possibly directed them a little bit um you framed it beautifully um you know just having the baubles it's, it's a totally sort of christmas celebration picture isn't it but what really gets it for me you've got your focus bang on perfect in the right place you got the shutter speed just right hey sam okay you directed them but you did a good job because if you don't direct someone well you don't get a great response and you've got a brilliant response because they don't look as though they're being directed they look completely natural that is something which is a skill in itself it's a photographer skill that is so far outside of the equipment and the gear and the camera and the lenses and all that stuff um, I like the you know the warm tones, the warm Christmassy tones. It's a it's a lovely Christmas picture, um, and I hope you turn it into a Christmas card or something and give them that picture as their Christmas card next year. I just think it'd be good fun. Beautifully done, sir. Another regular. Carriales. Um, I just think it's a it's a lovely moody sort of a picture. Now. You know, I've been on at people saying, you know, well, shame that isn't lined up quite right. But this one, I think, kind of works for the opposite reason. I think it works because it is at a bit of an angle. And I'm guessing this is a selfie, Carrie, if you're here. Um, I'd love to know. But you've got really lovely light on your face. That, that catch light in your eyes. I'm assuming it's you. Um, the catch light in the eyes it's it's just really gentle and, and soft and that you know i get it doing that on the mirror it's uh i just think it's a lovely picture and it absolutely is a frame in a frame dreamy expression is probably what i'm trying to say oh yeah now because i chose these on monday of course <laughs> i've forgotten which ones that i i've chosen um this one is from our friend Joel down in the Philippines. Joel is in our feedback group, um, feedback group, and he completely blew us all away when he we, we sort of went through some stuff and he did his feedback. He said, "I'm really sorry, guys. I've got to go now. It's four o'clock in the morning and I need some sleep before I go to work." How's that for dedication? Um, you're welcome, Carrie. I think it's a lovely shot. So Joel's picture. I just it's another kind of beautifully moody thing we've had a few of those you know on sunrise sunsets through windows on things but for me this one it just really did it i just love that wicker chair sofa whatever it may be in there and you know the sunlight catching on the water the little boat framed in the window um it's got a lovely lazy sunny afternoon feeling for me so even though what we're seeing in the frame of the doorway isn't like the most exciting thing, it's still framed within a frame. And I, I, to me, it just works. I don't know what more to say on that. Um, I just think it's, it's a cracking picture. So here we go. Just before we have a look at the image of the month. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. The next challenge will go up. Um, very shortly after this live ends. Um, once again, reminder, please hit that like button if you haven't done so already. I also just want to invite you to come and check out some of the workshops I've got planned for next year. The website is really easy to use now. We've got that lovely new website. So when you go to have a look at the challenge, just hit on the workshops tab, come and have a look. Hoping we're gonna go back to Morocco again because it was just the most brilliant, wonderful experience with the most wonderful, lovely people. You get away from the cities, you get into the little villages. It is just breathtaking. The scenery, the people, everything. And of course, we have already got Ireland up and running and open. So I'm just putting that out there because I'd love to see you guys. And of course, I want you to come because I want to meet you. But I also want to make a living. So there you go. Right. And finally... The one which I just couldn't help but keep being drawn back to is from, I want to make sure I get your name right, so let me just look on my other screen here, is from Lisa Rennie. 
I just think it's a lovely, simple, and beautifully fulfilling the brief picture. Um, it's a frame within a frame. And what it's framing is so simple. It's just that picnic bench in the snow. Um, I love the gentleness of this, the, the soft contrast, you know, the grey, snowy sort of a day. I'm also guessing that Lisa, you, I hope you're here, Lisa, please give us a wave if you are. Look how beautifully well positioned those trees are. Now it's possible Lisa was just walking along and thought, oh, look at that, that's all lovely. But I also think it's likely that Lisa probably walked around these trees to find the place where all those gaps lined up nicely. Look at the gaps between the tree trunks and the edge of the frame and the gaps between the picnic table and the tree. Yes, yeah, slightly off center, but it's only slightly and it, and, and it works. Um, the fact that the trees and you know, you didn't need the whole tree. You've been really brave and just crop them in a little bit. What more can I say? I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a lovely, simple picture. It's the sort of thing, yeah, it's the sort of thing you see in a poster, isn't it? It's just a nice wintry scene. It's, it's a lovely picture. So, thank you for being here. That brings us to the end of this photo creative frame challenge. Um, I've got another challenge for you waiting in the wings. It will go live very shortly. Um, again, if you get value from the group, I would invite you to please make a small donation, make a little contribution to help keep it going. It's just magical to see so many of you brilliant people here. Um, if you're someone who watches these from the sidelines but hasn't entered any pictures yet, go for it. Just go for it. These are workouts for your creativity. It's a gym session for your photography. It's a little project for you to go and do. It's something to try and help motivate and inspire you on those days when you think, oh, I'd like to go and take some pictures of you, oh, I can't be bothered, and mm, the cat looks like it might be sick, and things like that. Just do it, just do it, just do it. Yes, thank you, Helen Martin. If you haven't done it already, don't forget, hit that like button, it really, really helps. Beyond that, I look forward to seeing you next time. I wish you the most wonderful 2024. I hope it is everything you guys could wish for. Beyond that, see you next time.